This will be kind of a quick walk through some transformation matrices in R2. These are matrices that will let you take points and flip them, move them around. There's also analogous ones for R3, but let's take a quick look at a couple of them. Suppose you've got this point out here, xy, and you want to perform a reflection over the y-axis. Maybe you want to set up some system so that you'll continue to reflect points over the y-axis. So when you reflect that over the y-axis, the y-value doesn't change. It's the x-value that changes. So you end up with negative x, y. You could think of this as w1 equals negative x, but the y's don't change. w2, no x's, and keep the same y that you have. So what does the matrix look like? The matrix looks like this, negative 1, 0, 0, 1. And suppose I took the point, I don't know, 3, 5. If I take negative 1, 0, 0, 1 and multiply it by 3, 5, I'll get negative 1 times 3 plus 0 times 5, which is negative 3. And then 0 times 3 plus 1 times 5 is 5. Will that have worked? Sure. 3, 5 could be up here somewhere, and then negative 3, 5 is over there, right on the other side of the axis. So this matrix here will reflect any point over the y-axis. Well, what do you think is going to happen if you want to reflect it across the x-axis? Right? Let's take a look at that one. So for our second one, let's reflect over the x-axis. Reflecting over the x-axis means that the x-coordinate stays the same, but it's the y-value that changes. So the x remains the same, the y flips sign. So would it make sense then that I'll use the same identity matrix as before, except this time I'll put the negative 1 down in that corner over there. So any point that you multiply by that matrix will flip it across the x-axis. All right, there's other ones. Suppose you want an orthogonal projection onto the x-axis. Right, what does that look like? That means you're taking this point up here, x, y, and it's turning into x, 0. So your y value is now 0. Your x value remains the same. That's what the transformation matrix looks like. All right, you can do orthogonal projections onto the xy plane. If you have um, a three-dimensional set of points, you can project onto the xy plane just by making the z value 0. Suppose you want to do a rotation. And we actually hit this, I think, at the end of chapter 4. But it's always worth reviewing again. Suppose I've got this point here, cosine theta, sine theta. And I'd like to do a rotation. I'm going to end up with a point up here, right? So I'm basically taking that axis and tilting it. So I'm going to end up with a point up here on the axis that's 90 degrees off. Well, the cosine and sine are complementary angles. So the cosine of theta is the sine of pi over 2 minus theta. So over here, really, you're just flipping the points. You're getting the sine of theta, comma, cosine of theta with one little caveat, and that is when you cross over that y-axis, that becomes negative. So what's my transformation matrix? All right, it looks a little funny. It's not ones and zeros anymore. Now it's cosine theta, sine theta. That's my first point. My second point is negative sine theta, cosine theta. And so this rotates it counterclockwise. about the origin in whatever number of radians or degrees theta is. Right, let's take a look at a quick example. Suppose I want to rotate the vector 1, 1. All right, so let's rotate 1, 1 through an angle of theta equals pi over 6. So what does my transformation matrix look like? It looks like this. I got the cosine of pi over 6 
the sine of pi over 6. Then over here, I've got the negative sine of pi over 6, cosine of pi over 6. All right, let's turn those into numbers and multiply it by 1, 1. Back to your unit circle days. Cosine of pi over 6 should give me square root of 3 over 2. Sine of pi over 6 is a half. All right, so then this gives me a negative half, and this gives me a positive root 3 over 2. I'm going to multiply that by 1, 1. A right, little matrix multiplication will give me a square root of 3 over 2 minus a half for the first term and a half plus square root of 3 over 2 for the second term. I turn them into decimals just if you want to see where we are on the plane. So in approximate terms, you're now at 0 0.37. 1.37. All right, so if you're going pi over 6, you've moved up a little bit. So from 1, 1, you've moved a little bit further out and up. So that vector has changed, and that's where it is. All right, and that's the end of this real quick section.